Oh, I think we can finish this chapter today. Of course, we should. Do. Okay, okay, three more sections. <laughs> okay. What is next? What is next? Oh, next is. Tapana. Okay. I think. Oh. Say, the, please don't. No, me, la, na, raising sentence. <laughs> <laughs> nominalizing <laughs> sentence. So the nominalizing, nominalizing. Okay. Okay. So next topic is nominalizing, nominalizing. sentences. Let's go at thirty-six minutes thirty-nine seconds. Thirty-nine. Thirty-six. Thirty-nine. Thirty-six. It's weird. That brings us to nouns so that you can using sentences in Japanese, which is basically turning full sentences into nouns so that you can modify them and work with them like you would regular nouns. So to nominalize a sentence in Japanese, you basically take an informal sentence. So if that sentence ends in an informal way, whether, whether it's the dictionary form of a verb or informal conjugation of an adjective or just a noun. And then we add noga plus a sentence or a word describing that sentence. Now, Genki does not show this second part. And I'm not going to go into it much. I just wanted to write it down here because many, 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 many people ask when they're on lesson eight whether noga is the same as kotoga or whether they should actually be using one or the other. Kotoga is the same thing, but kotoga, kotoga is more formal, I believe. Noga is more informal. Informal mm. sentence plus kotoga plus something describing the informal sentence. So the koto also nominalizes what comes before it, but it's a little bit more formal than saying no ga. So here are some examples, and I'll just throw in a koto in there so you can see what I mean. So, ofuro ni hairu no ga tsuki. I like to take baths. Literal translation is, I like getting into the bath or taking baths. You could also say, ofuro ni hairu koto ga tsuki. This, tsuki this. You probably have a death there, because it would probably be a more polite sentence if you're using koto. Ofuro ni hairu koto ga tsuki desu. A little less formal. Ofuro ni hairu no ga tsuki. Or tsuki desu would also be fine. Like, you can you can use it in a more polite situation. But these are just the simple sentences. So that's that. Unten suru no ga jōzu. You're good at driving. Yori o tsukuru no ga keta. I'm not good at... Okay, what is nominalizing, Yukiko? Nominalizing, make the, maybe make the noun. Sono tori. So, mm -hmm. Sono tori, sono tori, that's right. So, nominalize, how this, how can you decompose this um, word? Nominalize, right? So, no, like, make a noun. No, <laughs> no, no, nominalize. <laughs> nominalize. Uh, yeah, 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 nominalize, nominalize. Uh, the really straightforward composition of the word. Nominalize, nominalize. Okay, so, um, ofuro ni hairu no ga suki. I'm, I'm really interested, like, Andy san picked no and koto together. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Nominalizing is making a noun from verb. So, of course, if since verb is a verb, so you cannot use as a noun, obviously. <laughs> so, hmm. but if you put this word no, then you can make it a noun and you use as a noun. So, ofuro ni hairu no ga suki. For example, mm. if you want to say you like something, you have to use noun. That's the rule. So, for example, I like Japanese. Nihongo ga suki. Noun. Ga suki. You can say noun. Ga suki. But you cannot mm. say Nihongo o hanasu. Ga suki. Mm. Why? Mm, because yes. hanasu is verb. So people think sentence over here. <laughs> and why you can continue? Of course you can't. That's why you have mm. to make it a noun. So mm. how can you make it a sentence? Nihongo ni hanasu ga suki? Instead? Nihongo hanasu no ga suki. Right. So you're gonna say verb no ga suki. 
verb. No, gaski. So it's an infinitive. So you just use infinitive as a like a normal option. Hanasu no gaski. Ofuro ni hairu kana. Of course, if it's noun verb, noun sentence, you can say ofuro gaski. Ofuro gaski. Shower gaski. Mizu gaski. That's a noun sentence. But instead, you're gonna put in the action. Ofuro ni hairu no gaski. And here, Andy san introducing koto the option. Do you usually do that? Koto. Ofuro ni hairu koto gaski. No, do you? Even introduce koto here. Mm, yeah, eh, so, 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 yeah, maybe you can use koto also. I, no, no, no. My question is do you mm. usually introduce no and koto together here in this section? Mm, you mean, eto, eh, nandaro, koto to to. ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、ことと、
はいいいですね、うん、はい英語を勉強するのが好きうん、うん、好きですうんうんドイツ語を勉強するの難しい難ですしかい<笑>ドイツ語を勉強するのが難しい<笑>うんはあ、ドイツ語を勉強するのが大変うん、ドイツ語を勉強するのが嫌い。<笑>え本当に嫌いですか嫌いじゃないですよ。嫌いじゃないけど難しい。<笑>大変ですドイ。ドイツ語を勉強するのが大変。うんうん、だから好きじゃない。<笑><笑>嫌いじゃない。嫌いじゃないけど好きじゃない。うんはい、ハマシさん、あの、のを使いましょうね。だから、運転するのが下手。はい、のを使う。も,もちろん、がも使う。このが、どうしてがを使うかというと、これは、あの、ちょっと前に出てきたグラマーですね。X は、Y が、アジェクティブ。好きみたい。ああ、うん、マジ。はい、和を使うというルールでしたね。はい、うん、X は、As for x, y が adjective はいこのルールなので、うん、はい adjective の前にはがを使いますね。Okay, そうそう that's it. Oh gosh, we can move on. うんうんうん。